Good day folks and welcome to the IT way. My name is Joanne and today we're going to continue with the configuration of the features that you might find in the Cisco Meraki dashboard. This time it's going to talk about radio servers. So you know that you can configure and integrate your radio server logs and radio server authentication with the Cisco Meraki dashboard. We're going to go through the different configurations and the different products that we have. So we have access points, we have switches, and we have security appliances. So here you can see all the aspects that we're going to cover. First, with the wireless access control page to use the WPA2 Enterprise using radio server, and as well with the splash page. And we're going to see the difference between the two and the considerations during the implementation for that. The same thing, we're going to go through the switches to see how you configure a specific switch port for this application, having a radio authentication, and go all the way to the security appliance. Security appliance is almost the same thing as the wireless. You're going to have two different places to configure it, and we're going to talk about the difference and the considerations during the implementation. So let's go through the dashboard and let's configure it. <laughs> The first configuration that we will do, we will start with the access points. So we're going to go to this wireless and access control page. This time we're going to use the WPA2 Enterprise for authentication with the radios. We're going to find our SSID. We want to use the WPA2 Enterprise. Here you select this option. There are several ones. The one that we want is the my radio server. When you select this option, you're going to see this new section here. You can add your server. In this case, since this is going to be WPA2 Enterprises from my access points, the radio authentication is going to be sent from my access points and the radio request is going to be sent to the radio server, which is this IP address. I'm going to use the port and I'm going to use it in this way. After that, you save the changes. And this test button is for you to test it. So you can use one of your radio username and password, begin the test, and you can identify it if it works or not. And that's how you configure it just for a WPA2 enterprise access control page. We will continue with the wireless access points with the radio authentication process, but now we will do it through the splash page, not the WPA2 enterprise. To do so, we're going to wireless access control page. Here you select your radius splash page. You can select any authentication requirements of these two here. And when you go to the splash page section and click and sign on, here we have different options. In this case, we are going to use the radius server. If you scroll down, you can see a difference from the previous configuration. Here, the host is a public IP address. And that is because the traffic of the radio request is going to be sent from the Meraki cloud. Previously, with the WPA2 Enterprise, the radio request was sent from the access point. But now it's going to be from the Meraki cloud. With that, it means that your radio server should be reachable from the internet. And the radio request is going to be from the subnets of public IP address from the Meraki cloud to your public IP address. In this case, we use the port 2525, which is security reasons and the secret. One important part is first, your radius should have a public IP address. Second, if the radius is underneath a NAT device, ensure that all your firewall rules to NAT devices and your port forwarding rules are compliant to ensure that that traffic is gonna traverse the internet and your devices and it's gonna reach out to your local radio server. And third, now you are not using the IP addresses of the access points as authenticators. What you're using is the subnets coming from the Meraki cloud. So you have to ensure that your radio server is proper configured based on that. To find the subnets that the Meraki cloud is going to use, when you enable this option, you're going to see this section here, the sign of splash, and these are the subnets. So the traffic should be look like coming from this subnet, any of these IP addresses to the destination, the one that I set, which is this one. Coming back, the good part about the wireless section is that you can test it at the same time. The status, this is going to take a while, not after you save it, you're going to see it right away, but it's going to change. If everything is okay, you're going to see it okay, but you, probably you can see the reach out that the device of the Meraki cloud is able to reach out the server. That's why all these public IP addresses, port forwarding comes to place. 
I can try and use one of my users. As you can see, it means that everything is well configured. Moving on from the wireless access points, now we're gonna do the switches. It's gonna work with the 8021X access policies with the configuration with the radius access. To do so, we're going to switch access policies. Here again, you can create a new access policy. We're gonna call it the way and select my radius server. You can add a new radius server. In this case, it's gonna be the same as WPA2 Enterprise. You can use your local server for this purpose. Let me fill this out. We're gonna save it. The good feature about this access policy in the switches is that you can test it as well. As long as the radio server is reachable through the access point, everything should be fine. I'm gonna tell you, tell you the total switches and the switches that pass and more information about the radius attributes. That's how you configure it in the access port. If you would like to assign this access policy to a switch port, you just have to go to the switch. I'd like to see the switch ports in this way from the switch status. Let's select one. In the configuration side, the access policy, you can see the one that we already created, the IT way. So if you put that policy, when you connect a device here, it's gonna prompt the radius credentials for us then to authenticate against the radio servers that you have locally. This time we're gonna continue with the radius authentication process, but now we're gonna use the security appliance MX. The same, security appliance MX has two ways to configure the same as the access point. Now we're gonna do that with the 8021X authentication using a specific port. So we go to security and SD1, addressing and villains. Just check what is the villain they're gonna use. In this case, we're gonna use the radius clients VLAN ID 40. We can create a new port here with the access port and you will see this access policy section. We're gonna change it to 8021X and add our radio server with the port and the secret. So anyone that wants to access to the network through this port is gonna have to authenticate against this 8021X process and the radio service that you have here. One caveat for the MX configuration is that you don't have the test button to make it work. So you have to do some troubleshooting sessions and ensure that it works, it works properly. Finally, the last section that we're gonna cover is gonna be using the radio authentication with the security and SD1 security appliance, but it's gonna be with a splash page instead of the authentication for port port. We're going to security and SD1 access control page. We know already the VLAN that we're gonna use for authentication is gonna be the radius clients. In this VLAN, we're gonna select the sign on with my radius server here is the same thing as the splash page coming from the wireless access points. So the Meraki cloud is gonna be the ones who are gonna send the radius request, not the MX. With that said, it means that we need a public IP address for my radio server. Just for security reasons, I put 25, 25 instead of 18, 12. With that, you can save it. And this is another caveat for the MX configuration. Here, you don't have the test button the same thing as the switches or the access points. But there are three main parts that we have to cover here. Ensure that your radio server has a public IP address. Ensure that the NAT device, the router, or any um, port forwarding rules that you might have to ensure that the traffic coming from the internet reaches out to your local radio server. And since the traffic is coming from public IP addresses, ensure that your radius configuration is okay with the authenticator being the Baraki cloud. If you need more information about what are the public IP address that is going to be used for the radius request, you can go to the firewall info page and there's going to be a new section that is the sign of splash with customer host radius. And these are the public IP address. 
taking packet captures, you can verify what is the source po public IP address of the traffic. And that's how you configure it with the splash page with the M access. What it means is every client that is trying to associate or connect to the network internally using this VLAN is gonna be through this radius server configuration. And that's how you configure the radio service in all the different products that you can find the Cisco Meraki dashboard. We went through all the different scenarios for the wireless access control page, for the splash page of WPA2 Enterprise, for the switches for the access policy, and the security appliance for the different aspects that you can have it as well. So if you have any issues configuring, if you have any problems about the different considerations that we talk with the a splash page of going through the local access as well, please let me know, put your comments below. I'm more than happy to help you. And that's how you configure it in the Meraki way. See you in the next one.